Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever. This is weekly reading vlog number 52. So on the completion and upload of this vlog, I have been vlogging for a full year. Isn't that mental? So mental. Um, but actually we're now in the crossover of end of September, start of October, with October starting on Friday. So this is a really good switch around week of finishing up my September TBR and getting a head start on my October. To talk you through my plans, especially today is shower and wash my hair because this has just grown. Edit last week's vlog. Finish Not Here To Be Liked by Michelle Quatch because I have uh, less than 100 pages left. The only other things I have on my TBR for the month are The Poison Garden by Alex Marwood, which I haven't started and The Arrangement by Robin Harding, which is on my Kindle, and again, haven't started. So two books and 100 pages are what I have left that I need to read Monday to Thursday. One thing that's getting me down right now, and I don't know whether, I don't know what to do. So as a lot of you will be aware, there is a fuel shortage in the UK caused strictly by panic buyers. And well, there's not even a shortage. You just can't get fuel at the fuel stations because the queues are too big or they're already sold out when you get there. I knew I needed a full tank because I have plans to drive down to basically London tomorrow to hang out with a booktube friend. And they, when I got to the front of the queue after I'd been there a total of 45 minutes, I reckon, before I got to the actual pump, um, they told me I could only have 30 litres of petrol, which isn't enough. Um, and it's still chaos and I'm just scared. I'm really scared that I'll get down there and I won't be able to get back up. And my dad's kind of telling me not to go and I don't know what to do. I really don't. So I need to assess that today and decide. And there is a van outside my window. So other thing I need to do today is make signs that say, please do not stop. Because I literally was woken up by the guy picking up his kids this morning from the other building. Um, why you need to stand talking outside my window for 20 minutes, I do not know. But yeah, he got a death stare and there's now a big van with its engine running. So shower, edit vlog, read, make signs. Seems like a good plan. Hello, it just hit 12, like exactly. And I finished Not Here To Be Liked by Michelle Quatch. And, oh, I do have hair, it's just fallen because I've been laying on the bed. Um, it is there. And I don't love this. I don't want to, I get, bleh, worse. I got given it by the publisher, so I don't really want to give it a bad rating at all. Like, it, it does always make me feel like I can't do that. But I'm not 100% sure I agree with this book. Um, it does have some very strong messages of, like, feminism in teens. But overall, I think it showed that you can throw a hissy fit and get what you want, uh, which isn't really what I would want to be telling teens. I'd want to be telling teens like, yeah, stand up for what you think is right and find a way to um, kind of all work together to that aim rather than just forcing your way to where you think is right. I don't know, it's really hard to explain if you haven't read, th read this. If you have read this, please do drop me a message. I'd love to get in a conversation about it. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to sit at two and a half stars. Like two stars because I didn't really like it and half a star because at points it was cute. But yeah, I'm not a massive fan of this, sadly. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do, there is a graphic novel that I really want to read that I feel like it's gonna be a very quick one. I forgot I could just move you rather than pause. So I really wanna read, ow, <laughs> I hit myself with it. The Sad Ghost Club by Liza Meddings. I feel like this is gonna be quite a quick one and I know that Rachel wants this from me and she was also kind of keen on that book. So I might just package them up together. I have to go to the post office today anyway. So I might send her some books, um, but yeah. Only other thing is with this whole fuel situation and I'm supposed to be having the booktube like meet up tomorrow. And I just genuinely do not know what to do. Obviously like I'll have made my choice by this vlog is live, but the stress I am feeling right now of the idea of not being at home and not being able to get fuel. Like it was bad enough filling up yesterday and I thought I might be on the outskirts of my town with no fuel, but to actually be like near London is really, really stressing me out and I feel horrible about it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I really need to make up my mind quickly though. Um, I'm done. I don't know what I think. It's not getting a numbered rating. I think the point of this was missed on me. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm being overly critical today, it seems. 
but yeah cool it's a sad ghost and that's all like a metaphor for something it didn't really tick many boxes for me i'm afraid so packaging it up getting dressed heading to the post office okay my really quick pop into town to do some posting turned into a full-on shopping trip um in the rain because it started absolutely hammering it down and i was just in this t-shirt and i bumped into my mom and i've not washed my hair in two days and you know it was all good fun um i got some boring things like washing machine stuff getting started on cole's family's uh christmas boxes i'm gonna oops i'm gonna put them a selection of these like sweets in the only clothing item i got from a charity shop which i actually really really like like i didn't even debate this normally i consider whether i should actually buy it but i got this puma or puma as the americans apparently say like cropped long sleeve top and it was three pound so i thought i may as well i kind of like it and the books i got the first one is the first in a series that when rachel was here i said oh my god rachel if that was the first one i would buy it so i bought it when i found it and it's the knife of never letting go by patrick ness and it's in absolutely perfect condition so i got that for a pound i also got horns by joe hill i saw a lovely lovely edition of this with rachel it was like two pound fifty and for some reason i didn't buy it but this one was a pound just for the paperback so i grabbed it and i also grabbed 50 50 by steve kavanagh because when i showed that i had i hauled 13 last week and somebody said that was amazing and so was 50 50 so i got that so yeah successful trip out just to the post office ended up with three books and a really cool t-shirt so love and life <laughs> you ever seen me look so frazzled <laughs> um i am sweating it is horrible out there so i've been walking around birmingham all day it's been spitting a little bit occasionally like some very very slight rain and then get back into my own town where i have to walk from the train station which is a good 20 minute walk 15 20 minute walk it's absolutely persisting it down as my mom would say um 
Luckily, I didn't have much shopping for Birmingham, but I'll, I'll talk you through what went on. I started the purchases I needed for um, a present I'm doing for Cole's family for Christmas with squashies. And when I got back into Worcester, I went and got individual packs of Jaffa cakes. So that is for them. Oh, also in this bag is my current book, The Poison Garden. I'm now on page 198 and I'm not loving this, but I'm gonna finish it because I'm just over halfway. So I'm gonna finish this tonight, definitely. Oh, then I can't show you anything because there are two things here which are actually for Rachel's Christmas present. I know that that's early, um, but I saw them and thought of her. So I bought them ready and the rest is underwear. So I can't show that on YouTube. Okay, so that was it from Birmingham. I literally spent, well, I probably spent about 30 quid when I factor in how much food I bought which I think I showed you all the food. And then I got back into my own town and spent 50 pound in Primark. After going to the, after going to Europe's biggest Primark, I spent 50 pound in my local Primark. Anyway, uh, 20 pound of that is because I had these two pairs of jeans in a 28 inch leg. So, I bought 20 quid's worth of jeans because they did 28 inch leg, which is necessary for your little uh, dwarf friend here. Um, what else did I buy? Surely to God I didn't spend that much. Oh, I did, that skirt. Didn't intend to spend this much at all. Um, some little cycling shorts. People wear them all the time now. I'm joining in on the trend. A plain long sleeve top. Feel like I have no plain tops a present for Emily's Christmas present. <laughs> this skirt, how cute. I'm thinking it looks a little bit like schoolgirl-esque. And um, yeah, I need warm clothes for the winter. Don't really have any cute warm clothes. So starting that off. And this Cardi, thought it was adorable. It's stripy, um, but yeah. That is everything I got up to today. I've just had a text from my old boss. Um, so I'm gonna go for a coffee with him and his wife tomorrow, uh, which is lovely. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All I've really got planned. I am absolutely sweating. So I'm gonna just sit, chill for a second and then get in the shower because this is slightly disgusting. Hello, welcome to my floor. Um, I'm overwhelmed by life. So I'm gonna unhaul some books, which seems to be the thing that sorts me out. Um, I was looking at my physical TBR, it's now over 300 books and I just need to reassess that, like it's just silly. There are a couple that I've already read that I know I'm gonna get rid of while I've been looking through my shelves. So I thought why not do it all in the vlog? So let's find a place for you and I will show you each book I decide to get rid of. Okay, from the top row of my shelves that you won't be able to see, I grabbed Lucas by Kevin Brooks, which I've read at some point in the past. This says February of 2018. I don't remember it. I remember going to unhaul it, then thinking, no, I'll keep it. So guess what? I'm unhauling it. Uh, then I'm gonna get rid of The Piano Man Project by Cat French. Reason number one, reminds me of my neighbor because I call him The Piano Man. Reason number two, I bought this to fill a deal in a charity shop, so it must have cost me about 30p and I just don't care for it. It's, it's not gonna happen. Uh, book number three, Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis. I read this when in April and it didn't scare me and I thought maybe I'll keep it till spooky season and it might scare me, but it didn't scare me the first time, why would it scare me the second time? One row, done. <laughs> Nothing from row number two, so starting row number three. Okay, there were a few because I've made the decision to get rid of any Jacqueline Wilson books I don't think I'm gonna read. So the only reason I had them all was I bought 36 of them for 10 pound. So it was the cheapest set of books I've ever bought. And I was like, no, I have to read all these. I don't have to read all these. So I'm getting rid of Katie. Uh, I do know that the audiobook is on my library app. So if I ever wanna read it, I can. Um, Hetty Feather, Sapphire Battersea, Diamond, Oh, and then uh, a silly, well, silly little book I'm getting rid of is The Kissing Booth Road Trip. I have sort of fallen out of love with The Kissing Booth series after the release of the third book. So I just don't, even though I stamped and wrote in this, um, yeah, I don't need to keep this. And one I'm actually quite sad to see go, but I know I'm never gonna read it again, is The Little Prince in this gorgeous little edition. 
I'm not gonna read it again. And, and that's just fact. I don't know why I'm holding on to it. Next row. I keep thinking about the seller. So I read this not that long ago in May in one day and I just don't think I need to read it again but for some reason I don't want to get rid of it so I'm going to hold on to it for now but this is a serious contender next time so future Chloe remember that so nothing for there I love this book but I don't think I'm ever going to reread it and that's wonder I'm not going to reread it am I ever going to reread Slenderman next time consider it again next time this is a difficult one for me because I was given it by the publisher but I'm not gonna reread it, and that's his only wife going. Biggest chunk yet, just on sheer size. Emerald Star, Clover Moon, wave me goodbye, and my mum, Tracy Beaker. All going, and while I'm sat here, why do I wanna keep Jackie Daydream? It's Jacqueline Wilson's autobiography, and I, I do not care. And finally, The Cruel Prince is going. I don't know whether I've actually mentioned that before, but it is going. Somehow it was still on my TBR cart. The Illustrated Mum is going, which I read and didn't love. Thirst number one is going, which I'm gonna read number two next month, but, and I wanna read number three still, but I gave this three stars, so I'm just gonna get rid. And uh, this one actually I do feel quite um, good about, in a way, um, and that is It's Not Okay To Feel Blue and Other Lies. I'm not gonna read this anytime soon, and I feel like this would be more helpful in the hands of somebody else who would like to read you know for their own mental health whereas me just holding it on my shelves is not helpful so that's a lot of books all going and i feel great hello it is wednesday and um i mean it's only it's not even nine o'clock yet but today was gonna be my really big lie-in because i'm not doing anything until 12 45 and that's all i'm doing today and i got woken up by a van beef and its horn so i finally made the signs and these will be going in my windows now even though I know they'll continue, because then the guy came up to pick up his kids that comes nearly every day um, and started revving his engine, I don't know how he still got fuel. Yeah, they'll still do it. I know they will, but hopefully they feel a bit bad. And stopping looked wrong for so long, but that's definitely how you spell stopping. Hello. I don't know why this vlog has frazzled me. I don't know what I filmed, what I haven't filmed. So let's just catch you up. People will have seen, I had a disappointing Too Good To Go bag. I managed to get a Yo Sushi one tonight. I'm not gonna lie, I thought the girl was flirting with me. I think she was just doing her job, but she asked me what I wanted from the fridge. I got the £16.95 sushi sharer for £3.50. I mean, technically it does need to be eaten in the next two hours, which we all know is not gonna happen but I can make a good go of it. I'm gonna eat the ones I think might go weird when well, they've been left overnight. Um, but yeah, steel, absolute steel. My reading has not been going good. I didn't do any reading today. I ended up just going to see my old boss and his wife um, and trying to sort out some problems for them. So I think I'm actually start doing a bit of work for him. Like I'm not doing a full-time job running YouTube, I may actually take on a second thing, a third thing third paid thing in my life what i don't know but still not finished the poison garden so i'm gonna get in bed and finish this off hopefully it's the 29th today so i have the 30th tomorrow that i can read the arrangement i'm gonna try my hardest to do it but i'm not doing anything tomorrow so i'm just having a cleaning and reading day and i'm quite excited for it so yeah time for some sushi i'll put some old reading sprints on maybe and finish this off but absolutely shattered Will you ever get a non-flustered looking view? Um, so I've been out this morning and, well, I should say it is Thursday, it is half 10. And I've just been out posting the winners of my giveaway in my book club for Dancing with the Octopus, which I was provided by the publisher to use in my book club. So that is really fun. So I've gone and posted those out. What I've also done, um, actually, my please no stopping signs worked because as i left a van pulled up outside my bedroom window like as i was outside and then when i came back it was a it was next door so it had driven away from my window and mm, I'm very happy um but yeah what have i been doing oh wait i finished a book last night so last night i finished the poison garden by alex marwood and i thought this was going to be a three star 
but I'm actually gonna give it a two because I just felt like nothing happened. I didn't get the answers I wanted and I didn't get the ending I wanted. So it just felt like a bit of a letdown, like there was far too much work put into this. The writing is tiny on the pages and it's a chunky book and yeah, wasn't a fan. So two stars for this one. And then just this second, I have finished The Lottie Project by Jacqueline Wilson, which I was listening to the audiobook for. And I do remember this being one of my favorites as a kid. It kind of still stands. I'm gonna give it three stars. Uh, this is about Charlotte who has to do a project on the Victorians so she decides to write a diary of Lottie who's a Victorian servant. Really really good. I would keep this if I had a nicer edition but it is pretty much falling apart so that one is also going. <laughs> Three stars. I then have a delivery from Jess and I wish I could show you what's in here but it's actually my best friend's birthday present so I can't actually show you. Jess is just such a lovely person so I will link her Etsy store. I've destroyed this box, sorry Jess. Yeah, I will link her Etsy store because everyone needs to go check her out. Oh, it's bigger than I thought which is a good thing. Oh, it's so nice. I do really like that. I do really like that. So yeah, um, Josie's Christmas present is nearly sorted. <laughs> but I can't show you because it's Josie's Christmas present. Um, and then as I was out, obviously I popped into some charity shops. So when I went charity shopping earlier this week, they had the first two books in one of the Robin Hobb series. You know, the Assassin's Apprentice one. Um, and I didn't buy them because I didn't think I wanted to read them. And then I've been reflecting and I wanted to give them a go. I went back, they're not there, somebody snatched them up, but I had to waste some time because that one didn't open until 10. So I quickly popped into another one where they had You by Caroline Kepnis, Caroline Kepnis. Um, and these, in this charity shop, the books are 75p or two for a pound. So for 25p, I got Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur, um, which is poetry. And I keep saying I'm not gonna do poetry anymore, but poetry, as a book feel like I can get more into apart from just scrolling on my phone but one pound and then the one I went into that didn't have the Robin Hobb anymore it did have his bloody project by Graham McRae Burnett I don't know I see this all the time and I thought it could be a really good book for my book club potentially so obviously I had to get another book I don't know why I've done this but Cole really loves the TV show. I feel like I want to know what it's all about and I'm not gonna invest time in the TV show. So maybe, why? Why am I doing this to myself? I mean, I did just panic that for some reason this wouldn't be the first one. I know it's the first one, but it is in immaculate condition. The spine isn't broken and for such a hefty paperback, that is impressive. Um, so yeah, I got all of these for two pound after I'd already said I was on a book buying ban. None of these have broken spines. They're all in perfect condition. So yeah, I just got some right bargains today. What am I gonna do now? I need to tidy up my apartment. I've probably got some videos to edit. So I'm gonna put on another audiobook. I might go, I've either got A Stranger in the House by Shari Lapina or The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. We're gonna go with the Shari Lapina because I've had it the longest. So I'm gonna start listening to that while I get things done. Then I need to somehow read the whole of the arrangement by Robin Harding, but I don't see that happening. I will let you know whatever happens. Okay, random delivery time. I think this is the stationery I bought off Shein after watching too much TikTok of scrapbooking. Even though, I don't know if um, <laughs> any of you will remember, I bought a lot quite a while ago and I spent a fair amount of money and I was really upset with what arrived, but I'm trying to be positive. I kind of knew what to expect a bit more. So those are receipts. Okay, this first one looks like a teeny tiny, oh, so they are stickers like this style. How adorable. So we've got some pink peachy color stickers. Next up, we've got this little packet of vintage looking stickers. Well, they're like pieces of paper that you stick down. And they're like nude colors. Then something very similar in pink and like pastels. I'm trying to get this to focus is so hard. But yeah, pink and pastel colors. I don't know when I will actually use all of these. These are gonna take some time to get through but I just like the little pieces of paper. So very similar to the last one, but these are all orange and like sunset colors. 
very cute okay last one and then we have some mystery washi tape okay so more of the same really doesn't want to focus on this one for some reason um with like blues and whites so very 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 cute overall and then the mystery washi tape oh, it's all pink which i would be happy with but i have so much pink but these are the theme these are the washi tapes i've received i would be so happy like with pink normally but i just have so much pink um but yeah so i do think these kind of get expensive but i have five packs of these different bits of paper to stick in 10 rolls of washi tape and one of these and i spent about eight quid can't really complain when you know what you're expecting <laughs> hello it has actually been a busier day than i thought and i've done pretty much nothing i have sat and read well listen to the entire audiobook of stranger in the house by shari lapina it is my favorite book by that author by far i'm gonna give it four stars um but this is all about see, i don't even remember their names and i've literally just finished it and i've listened to the whole thing so i was like karen i've listened to the whole thing and it's about this couple who the uh, husband comes home and his wife is missing and he calls the police and it turns out she's been in a car accident from reckless driving he knows that his wife would not do that so it's investigated a little bit more and it turns out that there is a dead body very close to where her car accident happened and it's so interesting i did not guess the twist what i feel like shari lapina does is i think she makes it very very easy for you to guess what you think is going to be the twist which will be part of the story but that won't be the final answer and i didn't guess the final answer so i really did enjoy that and it is my favorite i listened to it on my library app so i, I don't have a physical copy of that one i don't know whether i'd keep it anyway because i don't tend to reread thrillers but i did have a good time with it what i've now started is the audiobook for the anthropocene reviewed by john green i'm only about 15 pages in right now i'm just listening to it as i do little tasks and this is the accidental non-fiction book i purchased but i've already cried i think john green is just such an excellent writer and he is the narrator for this so actually listening to his introduction for his own book was really good um, but that's what I'm cracking on with at the moment. But what I've been doing that whole time, because it is now gone four o'clock, I set up my new journal. So this is the journal I'm gonna be working in from November onwards. And I have just filmed a video. I haven't done the sit down part. I have just filmed a like journal video of what is in here so far, because I'm gonna be doing a full journal flip through when I finish my current journal, but I thought it would also be an interesting video for you to see what I've got set up in the journal, ready to use it. And then when I've finished it, I can do a, this is what's in my journal, journal flip through. Does that make sense? But yeah, just filmed that. So going to probably do the sit down part tomorrow if I get a chance, but that is all done. I mean, just a sneak peek, it's cute it's cute so um i'm gonna eat some more sushi because i still haven't finished all that sushi maybe watch another youtube video probably just carry on with the john green book actually and fill out some more of this that i can but yeah really enjoying just chilling because it's back to work tomorrow right i just thought i was done with updates for a little while and i got something i haven't had in a very long time and that's an amazon bag how exciting and what is it what is in it Ooh we have <gasps> chelsea you are killing me oh my god i know that this is from chelsea she has got me a passport holder with the american flag on it what do i even say to this what do i even say <laughs> this is hilarious and i love you so much i'm gonna get my passport right now that was a teeny tiny bit worrying because I couldn't find my passport. I found my passport. <laughs> Wait, when does my passport run out? 2025, I've got time. Oh, what are you supposed to, there's pockets. So are you, you're just supposed to stick it in? Cause there's other things, there's, I guess you put your passport in and then you use these pockets for other things you might need. Oh, I am loving this. Chelsea, you're amazing. You're, you are amazing. Is there a note? Oh, you said it wouldn't let you add a note, so that's why you want to let me know. 
duh. But can we just all agree that Chelsea is hilarious and we all need her. We all need her in our lives because I am, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Hello. So I have not worked properly in about a month. I've got a day to do today and I don't want to. <laughs> this is so weird. I'm working now until Christmas. So I need to just get my ass into gear, but I'm like so unbothered. So I've got my audiobook on. I'm gonna sit, I've got two weeks worth of emails to read. So that's gonna probably take me most of the morning. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna try and make the most of it and try to not get distracted. I'm feeling like this coming back to work is like, I can put so much more effort in and I'm gonna try to keep that effort. How long it'll last, I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't quite know what look I'm going for today, but let's just whack my hair on top of my head so that I can update you. Um, that's not what I wanted. We will go with it. So today is Saturday the 2nd, which means it is Raidathon, uh, the 24 hour Raidathon hosted by JD Ray Reads. And I was gonna do it. I was gonna stay up for 24 hours, but I went to bed and I woke up at 8 a.m. Didn't really work. Um, so that was because yesterday, I don't actually know if I mentioned it, did I even film anything yesterday? I'm just, the world has gone, I might, senses of time, everything has just left me in the past couple of days. So I worked for a little bit and then went to an escape room with work and it was the best escape room I've done. It was the first one that I've actually gotten out of, um, which I think I could have gotten out of the Alice in Wonderland one I did if I was with work. Uh, but I was with my parents and we were all as useless as, as each other. Um, but yeah, with work, there were some intelligent people and we got out. It was really scary. It was all in the dark. It was about a mad scientist who had been kidnapping people and doing experiments on them. So we had to get out within an hour because that's when he was coming back for us. And it was really good, really good. Um, but yeah, did that. And then we decided to go out for some drinks as like a leaving party for somebody who's left. And I didn't get back in till 11. So I just went to bed as per usual, like completely forgot about the 24 hour readathon and then woke up at eight. What I did do though, I started off the readathon picking up Fallen, which is my park entry prompt for Magical Hopathon. And I managed to get to page 120 in one sitting. Then I decided I had like a couple bits and bobs to do around the apartment. So picked up the Anthropocene Reviewed again. And I'm now a bit further than even this because I'm on my, I'm listening to the audiobook and I haven't like picked this back up. But I'm quite deep into it. I'm on page 237 by this count, so I must be a little bit further. And I'm pretty close to the end. And feelings about this as they currently stand are that I don't really love it. I appreciate John Green's opinion on stuff, but this is why I don't do opinion-based non-fiction that often, because a lot of these, I just, I'm finding them a bit, eh. And there are essays on really, really cool things like the penguins of Madagascar. So they are interesting. Some of them have made me chuckle. Some of them have made me tear up, but other ones I'm just like, what is the point here? So I reckon it's gonna come out at a three star and I don't think I'm gonna hold on to this, which makes me so sad because it's perfect. And I was so happy to get it. It's just not, just not my thing, not my thing. Um, so yeah, still doing the Raidathon, technically. I need to edit some videos, really. Uh, but I mean, that's not reading and I can't listen to my audiobook at the same time. So stressed for no reason. So I'm going to finish this, have some lunch and maybe edit. I don't know. I hate editing when I'm trying to read loads because it's taking away from my reading time. But I also really need to edit so that you get videos. Also, I'm premiering my book club picks for the next three months uh, at five o'clock today. So that'll be up by the time this vlog is up. So we'll link it in the description for you if you are interested. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping people turn up to the premiere tonight. 
Hello. It is now about six o'clock and I feel like I've been reading this damn book all day and I'm, I'm still not done. I am really enjoying it though. I think it's going to be a four star, but I'm still going. I've just had Chinese food and the amount that I had was actually like embarrassing, so I didn't film it. I um, didn't eat everything I ordered, but I ordered a lot. So I'm going to have to have a second plate of that a bit later. But I think what I've realised tonight is that some people's reading sprints don't really work for me. Like I get more distracted. Um, I mean, that's not a bad thing against any different booktubers. It's just maybe I do well on my sprints because I feel accountable. But then I don't feel accountable on other people's. I don't know. I will definitely still continue to support my friends on their book on their reading sprints um but yeah it weird weird how i get so distracted saying that i am on page 384 of this book and i finished the anthropocene reviewed so i have done a fair amount of reading today just not as much as i wanted so yeah i'm gonna put some sort of playlist on in here like some sort of asmr room or something and finish this off and then start another book because i wanted to read so much today about quarter past 11 and I have Ashley sprints on in my bedroom so sorry if you can hear that but I didn't want to pause her and then have to reset her up again I've stuck some nails on they're not like amazing but they'll do that's not focusing there we go they'll do um book update I did finish Fallen earlier and I did settle on th uh, four stars so I did have a really good time with it I enjoyed the storyline I remembered the plot twist but I did have a good time with it and I was rereading this to see whether I needed to keep it forever or whether I could unhaul it and you know what I'm keeping it so there's that one and then during Ashley's sprints I've been reading Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli and I'm currently on page 254 so I have about 100 pages left to go. This was one of the first books I read on booktube and I gave it five stars when listening to the audio. I This is another one I was rereading to see whether I needed to keep it forever and I have decided that I don't need to. It's probably going to be a four star but the main appeal with this book is that we have Simon who is emailing Blue um, and he's having like an online kind of, not relationship, like a flirtation with Blue, but he doesn't know who Blue is and Blue is not publicly out as gay at school. Um, and the main thing is like working out who Blue is. And I remember who it was from when I read it in 2018, which I didn't think I would remember, but I have remembered who it is, which kind of makes it a little bit more boring. But I do really enjoy it and I like the story, but I just don't think I'm gonna read it again because now I'll definitely remember who Blue is. And um, I mean, I could, be, I could be catastrophically wrong. I don't think I am, but I could be. So one more sprint with Ashley, she's going till midnight. So hopefully I can finish that off in this sprint. And then um, I'll probably update you in the morning with my thoughts because I'm tired. Hello, it is Sunday morning. I finished Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda at a reasonable time actually last night. It didn't take me that long to finish, but I've already put it in my book trolley. So I did rate it four stars. I did really enjoy it again. I thought it was very cute. But the problem is, as I already mentioned, I think, because I know who blue is that's like a big thing of the story so i had to bring it down from a five star to a four star because the enjoyment just wasn't there but that is because i reread it so i will be unhauling that one um i don't want to ruin my experience like reading it again i would definitely know who blue is like I, there wouldn't be any doubt um so yeah just decided it's not one that i can reread a third time but read it again did enjoy it 
So I haven't really been updating what that means for the Magical Hopathon. So Fallen was my entry ticket, so I'm into the park, so I'm into Magic Kingdom. And what does this mean? Magic Kingdom, and then I've read Mickey's Friendship Fair, so I've done my show. What I want to do today is do my attraction prompt, which is read Ready Player One, which I'm quite daunted to read, but I do have my sprints later, which should help. Um, and I have a lot of editing to do, so I'd like to listen to an audiobook potentially, and on my library app. I currently have Spare Room by Drida Shay Mitchell. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. So I think I'm gonna download that and maybe start that. But my camera batteries are out to die, so I was gonna do aesthetic shots of me editing. That's not gonna happen because I've planned this badly. So I'm gonna put my camera battery on charge and do some editing. Hello, it is 20 past six on Sunday. So I'm doing my reading sprints as per usual. And while I'm on the sprints, I find out that my parcel has been ditched in the building from Amazon. So thanks again, Amazon. But I just wanna show you what I got and the sprints reaction to what I got. Um, this is what I ordered. <laughs> Crocs. <laughs> Cause you know, why? Croc Crocs are cool, right? They're so comfy. They are apparently coming back into fashion. And yeah, I, I got some Crocs. And this is what the, um, the vlog, not the vlog, the sprints decided they wanted to say. So Liam was not happy with Crocs. Just why? Um, sexy. Pris, oh my god, Crocs, I'm wheezing. At this point, I was also wheezing. Just people aren't, aren't happy with the Crocs. Maybe the delivery driver thought he was doing you a favour. Liam unsubs, crying crocodile tears. In the case the comments appear in the vlog, hi future Liam. Future Liam won't see this because he's unsubbing. <laughs> okay, so... Oh God, that zoomed in. So, you know, I just felt like this was a momentous occasion for me buying Crocs and being roasted for said Crocs. Um, but I'm enjoying the Crocs, I really am. Hello, it is whatever time, I don't have my watch on. It's like nearly half eight on Monday. So I've come in to wrap up the vlog. I am working from the office, which is mad. I've got up and had a shower, which I haven't done in so long to like leave the house. It just isn't normal behavior for me. So I'm a little bit out of my depth. So I need to wrap up the vlog uh, so that I can edit this tonight. <laughs> just to update you on my reading, I ended up getting just shy of a quarter of the way through Queen of Shadows last night. I am really enjoying it more than Air of Fire so far. I kind of understand more what's going on on um we did have a little chat in my sprints last night about how because i've slowly come to accept the fact that i do have aphantasia like i cannot see things in my head but to a degree that where i've seen things in movies i can repicture that so weird because i do that apple test and i cannot see an apple in my brain but if you tell me the scene where um Kari is fighting a demon in City of Bones movie and Jace turns up like I can see that so when I read contemporaries I can picture places I can picture celebrities as characters but I can't picture in fantasy when we're being brought to some sort of new place like i really struggle this is something you will know about even if you've read the first throne of glass book there is a glass castle in the the grounds i guess and i have no idea what that looks like in my brain if anything i'm picturing the emerald city from wizard of oz and that is not what that looks like um so yeah i do struggle to picture things in fantasy so i'm quite proud of myself for getting just shy of a quarter of the way through and i want to continue reading that tonight i'm also a third of the way through ready player one and i have packed it away in my work bag and i've got my headphones so hopefully i can carry on listening to that while i work and maybe make a pretty sizable dent into that today but apart from that, that's really all I have to say. So emoji of the video. Why don't we keep, because all I keep thinking about is that my hair's not completely dry yet. Leave me any sort of water themed emoji if you have got this far. So the raindrops wave, I don't know. It keeps focusing on the TV even though there's nothing on the TV. This is madness. Um, but yeah, as you all know, I say it in every single vlog. Everyone who gets to the end of my vlogs, you just put a massive, massive smile on my face. When I see those emojis roll through, it just means so, so much to me. And I really appreciate all of you guys. So if you got to this point, please do leave me a water themed emoji 
and I need to get my ass to work. So that is all from me today. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.